Hello, everyone. This is Talis May. This video is being specifically made for the book that I'm now writing called Dissipating. It's about end of life stories and circumstances that bring our grief and our emotional capacity to get through the grief up in the human body. It's also about letting go. It's also about self-care. It's also about realizing that we are not the human body. We are the soul within. We are that I am present. When you sit here and listen to me talk, who's listening? Is it your ego? Is it your body? Who's observing you listening to my voice? That part of who is listening to you watching this is who you really are. At the moment of our deaths, that awareness of you is freed from the human body. As a person who's watched quite a few people die, who's died myself, who has experienced death in our families, in our friends, in many capacities, as well as things that aren't about physical deaths, but dreams that have died, relationships that have died, that have ended. Those all bring up our capacity or not to grieve. And how we respond to these events, to these specific situations that we're all going to experience on one capacity or another, makes up who we are. That aspect of yourself that is watching this, that is listening to this, it doesn't react. It doesn't respond with the grief, but it gains the knowing and my sense of my awareness of myself is the level of compassion that my soul has accumulated. When you listen to some of my stories and in my body watched people go through tragedy after tragedy, illness, deaths, rebirths, breakups, divorce, trauma, rapes, abductions, violence, thefts, the loss of their lives, the loss of their health, their vitality, the loss of their whole legacy. I am a witness to those things. And as I witness those things, I see and I'm aware of how strong people's souls are. From my own death experiences, which you'll see in other videos that I've posted, you will see that at the moment the body is dropped and the soul ascends or is released, no longer held limitless, limited by the body. 
there is an awareness of certain key core aspects, let's call it genius connections, God, divine intelligence connections. And it is those connections, that ability to communicate with your own God source, with your own soul, with your own higher self, with your own divinity, with that soul that never dies. It is that which I come here to help you discover and to strengthen, to listen to, to honor, and to hold compassion for in your human condition. It isn't an easy chore. It isn't an easy task. It isn't an easy journey. I'm not here for your pity or your compassion or even your condolences. I've witnessed many, many things. And each one of those things, even if they were about myself, has strengthened my soul. It has given my soul an experience of observing what God created, what divine intelligence is here sharing with us, what we all can tap into. And in doing these videos and in doing the book dissipating I have found that by looking at how we die, how we live, how we die, same thing, you know, every child is born a certain way. And to some degree, when you witness a childbirth and you know that child from birth on, you see aspects and tendencies lived out in that child's life. Maybe they were stubborn to begin with. Maybe they were late to be born. Maybe they were quiet babies. They didn't cry much. Those pieces of that picture that we can take at childbirth are carried out, and I've witnessed that myself, throughout our lives. But they also are pronounced at our deaths, at the moment of our soul's transition into whatever you choose to call it, the other side of the veil, the spirit world, heaven. It doesn't matter. We all know there's something there that our soul journeys toward. And that part of us that journeys forward has gained a higher frequency from the way we live. The things that we have witnessed. Sometimes we're blocked from that higher awareness. We're blocked from raising our frequency because maybe we suffered narcissism, divorce, rapes, um, the loss of our parents young, maybe we were orphaned, maybe our best friend died. All of these things will happen to each and every one of us. But it's who we are that gains a higher energy, a higher ability to hold space, hold content of frequency. That's who we become. 
And why do we do this? Well, my supposition is that we do this to become closer to God. We do this to hear the voice of God, to live a godly life, to clean up the genetic inheritance, the ancestral epigenetic traumas and damages, but don't neglect the strengths that you inherited too. In my family, on my father's side, we have a tremendous strength among the women. We gave birth alone and in silence. Some women would never dream of doing that, but we have. Now, there's a certain level of inheritance of energy in the universe that we are rewarded with for those tests, those lessons. You know, it's like a checks and balance system. You do good things, you get good things. You pass your test, you get an A. You do even more, you get even more. You know, and those things are really important to the growth of the soul. We have to let go of our expectations to hear what we're really supposed to do and what our soul needs us to do. When you're on that journey, you become who you were when you were next to God, when you were created. And that's the biggest blessing I can wish upon anyone. Become in this time and space, in this moment, make the decision to be worthy and capable and in full integrity with the highest of standards and stand next to God. Would he take advice from you? Would Jesus? Would the Ascended Masters? Is that a path you would choose? It was for me. And when I crawl into my little cave and I write my books and I make these videos, there is no distraction out here. There is no other person or mindset or theology influencing me. It's all and only me and God talking. Me and Jesus talking. Me and the Ascended Masters talking. Me and Asclepius having conversations about healing. And it's some of that information that you'll find sprinkled or scattered throughout, like glitter, you know, because I love glitter, throughout all my books. There's little tidbits of wisdom and knowledge that's universal that is in the mind of God, that is in the mind of the Ascended Masters, that is directly from Jesus. It just came through me because I let it all go out there and I found peace in here, in my soul. And that's what my soul needed. As many of you will learn, I had a very traumatic and dramatic conception and childhood and infanthood as an orphan and then as a sexually abused child left for dead which I did die it was my first death experience that I write about in the book dissipating and in those stories that we tell I think you'll all find yourselves I think you'll be able to answer a few questions that you have about your own immortality, about your own dropping the body, death, transition experience. And it's my best and highest wish for you that it brings you peace, that it brings you solace, 
that it brings you compassion and kindness toward what you have witnessed on earth. Mwah. All my love, always. <laughs>